Okay, the, the next item is the Far West uh, Regional Planning Group projects. Uh, th this is a, uh, a set of projects that we're asking the board to endorse the projects, uh, but not only endorse the, pr the projects, but there are three 345 KV lines that we would like the board to designate as critical to reliability. Those are the Riverton to Sand Lake, Sand Lake to, to Solstice, and Solstice to Bakersfield 345 KV lines. And, and I'll explain a little bit more about what that means uh, later in the presentation. Uh, it, it really, uh, the project set that we're bringing before you today is really uh, a continuation of the evolution of, of transmission plans and really the far western part of the ERCOT system. Uh, it's an evolution that's been occurring over the last four to six years. Uh, six years ago, we had a, in that area, there was a single 138 kV line from the Wink substation to the Culberson substation. It was a 84 MVA line that was built uh, some time ago. And, and since then, there have been a number of uh, projects that have uh, been put in place or are in the works right now. Uh, I'd like to uh, just take you back. Uh, one year ago, the board endorsed the Far West Texas project, which uh, in endorsed the first two 345 KV lines out to that region, the Odessa to Riverton line and the Bakersfield to Solstice line. Uh, and, and since a year ago, the, the load forecast for the area has really rapidly increased. And I'm going to explain th that more in the next slide. But uh, we, we came to you in, in February of this year and asked, because of that rapid increase in, in the load forecast, that the board designate the Odessa to Riverton 345 KV line, that northernmost line, as critical to reliability. And again, I'll explain a little bit more about what that means uh, later in the presentation. Uh, but um, since last year, we, we have seen that, that load forecast really rapidly increase. And, and I wanted to show on this graphic on the left, um, what you see here are the, uh, the, the bubbles in, in each of the counties. Uh, those represent the, uh, the, the, the size of the bubble and the color represent the number of oil rigs in each of those counties. So this is all of the counties in the Permian Basin. And the, the plus or minus show the change in that rig count from April of 2017 to, to April of this year. So in the last 12 months, what, what has been the, the, the change in, in the rig count? And what you see is there's really two areas that the development has really been focused in. The first uh, is um, kind of on the um, uh, kind of that Midland, uh, Glasscock, Howard, Martin County areas. Uh, that, that's the, what's known as the Midland Basin. And then what I've uh, highlighted on, on the western more, most portion is uh, that, that's the uh, Delaware Basin, which extends up into southern New Mexico. And, and what we've seen is that those are the two areas that have the, the focus uh, of, of where the activity is going on right now. And that area that in the, that Delaware Basin on, on that far western part, that, that is the area that uh, we refer to as the Culberson area or the Culberson Loop area. And I think I uh, it was um, in infamously said in, in February that uh, that's the hotspot of the hotspot. So if you think about uh, the Permian Basin as a whole has added about 80 new oil rigs since last year over that 12-month that period. And about 70% of those have been focused in that Culberson Loop area. And so that, that's really where we're seeing the low growth. And you can think of oil rigs as, as sort of rate of increase. Uh, so. They, they bring an oil rig into an area, they, they drill a hole, and then they, they add the, um, uh, the pumps and then all of the kind of the downstream equipment. And then they, they'll take that rig and, and they'll move that to another spot and, and they'll uh, you know, drill a hole there. And so really that rig count really shows us that that increase is the increase in the rate of new facilities that need to be served from the, the electric <laughs> system uh, in that area. So. Uh, you know, if, if, as an example, if you look at like the Crockett, where there's n currently no rigs uh, in, in service there, that doesn't mean that the load is going down. It just means that it's not increasing as much right now. So the increase in, in the uh, that we're seeing from a, a load serving perspective is really in those areas that have that uh, that the increase in rig counts. So uh, the uh, table on the on the right shows that a year ago, as we studied that Far West project, we were looking at 2021 conditions. And at that time, we had projected a load of about 550 megawatts uh, for that Culberson Loop area. Uh, this year, that same area, our 2019 forecast was 880 megawatts. 
uh, and if our 2022 forecast was a little over a thousand megawatts. So to meet that need, Encore uh, submitted two projects, one in, in late last year and, and the second one early this year to uh, meet the, the, the needs of that additional load growth in that area. And the, the first project was really focused kind of more on the near-term needs and the second project more on the long-term needs. Uh, we reviewed those in a single independent review and are um, uh, presenting them as kind of a combined project set today. And when we looked at that, we, we ran uh, two scenarios that I have shown in the chart here in, in the table. That, that first scenario is we looked at, okay, if, if uh, we don't do any additional transmission upgrades, if we just look at what the system uh, is today, or what we assume the system will be next year in, in 2019, uh, that 880 megawatt load uh, uh, forecast for next summer, uh, what are the reliability issues that we see? And we, and we saw uh, really severe voltage criteria violations. Uh, these are, this is reliability criteria violations uh, going into next summer. And then that second scenario, we really wanted to see, okay, if uh, we, we know that we've got the Far West Texas project coming with the new 345 KV lines that the, the board endorsed last June, is this just a temporary problem or even with those lines, are we still gonna have reliability problems with this increased load forecast? And what we found is that th those new lines help, but uh, alone, they are not able to meet the reliability needs for, for that area, and so we need uh, projects for both that near term for next year as well as in the long run. Now, uh, when we looked at, at that, um, we, we looked at a number of different options and all of the options that we um, shortlisted all had uh, essentially connecting those two 345 KV lines that were in, endorsed by the, the board last year. So connecting them with, with two additional segments so that you have a 345 KV loop to support the needs in that area. Uh, so the, the shortlisted options, really, really the main difference between the options were the, the size and the location of the, the reactive support for the area. And uh, what we determined was that uh, we felt like option three was the best option uh, because it had the, the best, uh, the, the highest amount of, of long-term uh, load serving capability, but also it was the only one that uh, for next year would it would be able to meet the, the load forecast for next year, be able to serve that 880 megawatts load for, for summer of 2019. Uh, so th this is a, a list of, of all of the uh, pieces in, in option three. It's probably easier to explain it with the, the one line diagram. Uh, essentially what we're uh, recommending is that the um, the Odessa to Riverton 345 KV line that was endorsed last year that the second circuit be added to that line uh, as well as the second circuit added to the Bakersfield to Solstice line that was endorsed last year and then the, the 345 KV line uh, connect, connect those via the Solstice to Sand Lake and Sand Lake to Riverton 345 KV lines. Um, and then the, the other uh, piece is that in two locations uh, within the loop there would be uh, 400 megavar of reactive support added. Uh, in our analysis, we also found that that 345 kV infrastructure is really critical to, to meeting the, the, load, uh, the load growth in that area. And the, the chart here shows how that forecast has evolved over the last four years. Uh, if you, you see that four years ago, um, at, at that time, we did not anticipate that the load would grow over 200 megawatts, but uh, as the industry has evolved and really focused on that Delaware Basin area, that area that, that we refer to as the Culberson Loop, that, that load forecast has just rapidly increased. And because of that, we are asking that the board in, endorse the, the 345 KV lines as critical to reliability. And what that will do is that will expedite the process at the Public Utility Commission when, when they go to review the lines uh, and, and uh, the need for those lines so that those lines can be put in place uh, quicker to meet that growing demand. So th this is a, a tier one project, which means that it uh, is required for the, the board to endorse uh, the project, I should say uh, it's required to receive endorsement from the board. Uh, and the need is really a reliability driven need. 
and this uh, language just gives the background on that critical designation. Uh, are there any questions for me? Any questions on this project? Okay, Carl. Jeff, did I hear you correctly that all these additions in, in option three will get us out through how many more years? Two more years? Three more years? Before we think something else might, if, let's say the Permian Basin continues to develop at this rate. Maybe the right right question is how long will this last? So right now, the uh, so uh, confirmed load additions by 2022 are a little over a thousand megawatts. Right. Uh, but in talking to Encore, they have another 300 or so megawatts that uh, of, of additional customers that they think could be added uh, to the system. So that that could bring that total up to you know 1,350 megawatts, give or take. Uh, th this uh, w once we put all of these facilities in place, it will get us to a load serving capability of just under 1,700 megawatts. So there, there's a little bit of room for growth on top of that. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Any more comments? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Sam. I just wanted to commend this work. I do think these uh, lines are critical. Um, I wanted to get a any color or opinions you have on the period between now and when these lines can go in. We've seen a lot of congestion already. Uh, a lot of industrial customers out there have seen the congestion. I'm wondering if you have uh, thoughts on outages or uh, anything else that would alleviate that over the rest of the summer or make it worse. Yeah, so th there are um, a number of upgrades that are already in progress, and, and sometimes those um, uh, upgrades, if there's outages taken, then that can exacerbate the congestion for a while. I, I think there, there's a line uh, in particular that's been really uh, congested a lot this summer. The, um, I think it's the Yucca to Gas Pad line. And uh, that line, actually the board endorsed that line upgrade, I, I believe is October of 20, 2016. Uh, and, and that project is supposed to be in place uh, this coming winter. Uh, so I, I think that's likely that we'll, we'll see some uh, congestion still on, on that line until that project gets, gets completed. Uh, it, it, in uh, some of the other areas, uh, again, there, there are upgrades that are in, in process, but I, I think until those upgrades uh, get, get in place, um, you know, we're going to continue to see congestion, uh, but I, I think there's a lot of, of uh, projects that should come in by next year that I think will help things out. So I think the latter half of 2019 may, may be, uh, ho hopefully it's not quite as bad as, as what we've seen here recently. Any more questions or comments? Okay, I need a motion to approve both items 10 and 11 on the agenda. Okay, Kenny, motion, have a second. Carl seconds. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Anybody need to abstain? All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Jeff, if you'll stand by, you're next up after the break. Let's, let's take a short okay. break at this point. Thank you.